Hello everybody, welcome back to Alan Walls Photography. This is Alan and I've got a mini DIY video for you today. I'm going to show you how to take a piece of junk and turn it into the sharpest macro lens for your phone you'll ever own. I've been working really hard lately and by yesterday afternoon I needed a break so I ran to a neighboring town to check out a new thrift shop and when I was there I found three amazing things and it gave me a great idea for a video. The first thing I found which won't be in the video except for me to show it to you is this unbelievable video camera. <laughs> well it might be a stills camera. It looks modern but it's not because the, it only operates if you put a floppy disk in it. It's a floppy disk camera. I didn't know these existed. This is a prized treasure now. Best $3 I ever spent. Does everybody else out there know that of course there are floppy disk cameras? I collect them, I have dozens of them. The second thing I found the girl at the cash register thought this was an easy bake oven from the 1920s. It's not. It's a slide projector. Amazing. Apparently it works. I've been afraid to plug it in because of the condition of the cord, but it is a slide projector that takes a bulb and you put your slides in here using this dangerous looking contraption like so and then I think something is supposed to go there as well but it doesn't matter it's so cool and it came with a bag of silica gel from before the first world war I think yeah could have been earlier than that to be honest it it has lace strings on it what did they use the silica gel for back in those days? I don't really want to know. Anyway, it came with another thing too. It came with two other things. One is this very dangerous looking device that I don't know what it's for, but it's got twin razor blades in it, like right where your finger would go. So this could be a, a guillotine and nothing to do with this projector, but it's, it's fascinating. I have to learn how to do it. I think this was probably made before the printing press. So there might not be a manual that I can find on it, but I'll figure it out. It even had one slide that had been left in it. Yeah. It appears to be Babylon. Who knows? I'll have to look at that when I project it on the wall. So anyway, $4.99, hard to beat. This is a real antique. And by the way, it comes with a, a top to the box, like so. So it's really very, very solid. The box was probably worth the $5. But the other thing I found is a bit more humdrum everyday kind of thing. It's just a Hewlett Packard flatbed scanner, but this is what gave me the idea for the video. Back in the mid 1940s, shortly before or after the war, uh, I was one of the lucky people to own one of the very first type A iPhones, which was the first steam powered iPhone. Uh, there were only two, and I didn't like the person that had the other one, so I never really used it, but it had a camera like modern iPhones, only it was a like a large format wooden camera and it wasn't actually attached to the cell phone. It came in a separate box and it wasn't any good for, uh, for macro. I mean, it was great for like Yosemite, terrible for macro. 60 or so years later, everything changed with the invention of electricity in 2001 by the Jonas Brothers at Kitty Hawk. After electricity was invented, the iPhone shrunk to the size of a bread box. 
a year after the electricity was discovered, a doctor in England, Dr. Polly Propylene, uh, invented plastic. I think she invented plastic. She invented pink plastic. And as a result of that, there was a new way to use the iPhone's camera. And it looked like this. In fact, it looked exactly like this because this is one of them. This is a department store macro wide angle telephoto tilt shift lens um, that uh, you could get at most department stores for about 50 cents when they came out. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, the, yeah, it just, it's useless. I have a whole box of them because I thought eventually I'd hit on one that was pretty good, but they're absolutely terrible. Around 2005, Hewlett Packard invented the first flatbed scanner. The same year that the Canadians landed on the moon, they came up with this amazing piece of gear. The way they work is the, the bit in the scanner that moves back and forth contains a series of mirrors. So the light that's collected from the system as it's traveling back and forth is focused by one of these tiny lenses onto the sensor, which is a CCD sensor. And that's what creates the signal that goes off to your computer, the scanned image. So what we're after is the lens and it's in here. And I'm gonna show you how to take this apart safely, get the lens out, and then I'll show you how to attach the lens to your iPhone in a way that it'll work like a really, really good version of this. So the first thing that you need to do is on the back, your, your scanner will be different. Uh, this is a fairly heavy duty one, which is why I was excited to get it because uh, it, it's gonna have a nice lens in it. This is the, the motherboard and the power handling uh, part of the thing. It's only uh, connected with two screws uh, and I already took them out. And when you flip this up and pull it out, Look at all those juicy looking microprocessors in there. This thing looks like it's hardly ever been used. Anyway, this is, this is nice. I'll save that for later. All right, so that's actually all the screws that there are on this thing. I think. Sometimes they hide screws under rubbery things. <laughs> yeah, didn't fool me there. So there are two black screws in here that usually these things are held with a couple of screws, either in the front or the back. And then everything else is just held by clips that we have to pry the front of. The glass is a big, thick slab of glass. It's probably special in some way, uh, but it's heavy. It makes up a lot of the weight of one of these things. So, the best way to go about it is to get in one edge. I'll do it so hopefully you can see it. Is to get in one edge and then you'll see the points further along. This is normally where I snap the thing. There we go. Then the same on the other side. As scanners go, this one is pretty heavy. Like I told you in another DIY video, that's a good sign. When the thing that you're taking apart weighs a ton. Ooh, nice. See how that's a big, thick piece of glass. It's great to use for macro as a, uh, as a, a prop or part of your um, lighting system. And the better ones are secured with just a thin strip of tape. And with patience, you can pry that off. But 
be very, very careful because the glass will break if you're too aggressive. But that's not what we're here for. What we're here for is right here, right underneath this. Now, this, this white thing that you can see here is a mercury vapor lamp. It's kind of like a fluorescent lamp. I guess it is a fluorescent lamp. Um, it's cold um, and it puts out quite a bit of light, but they're pretty dangerous. So you don't, they, they have mercury vapor in them and you don't want to break them. But underneath is a, a parabolic shaped reflector shining the light up. Up here at the, up here at the top, I don't know if you can make this out, uh, there's that series of lenses and uh, uh, reflectors that I was telling you about. And the CCD, the, the actual sensor, is in this black piece right here. So we're going to need to take all of this stuff out. So what I'll do is I'll get... I'm going to take the screws out that hold the whole frame into this. Another fantastic thing you can get out of one of these things. Uh, this one has a really nice heavy duty um, belt uh, with the grooves cut in it and a big motor up here. So that's a handy thing to have. There's surprisingly few screws that you usually have to take out to get the, the bed out. Maybe if I take it off down here, that will help. Every Every scanner is a bit different and you don't really know what, how it's going to be put together till you get in there, but they all, they all are set up about the same way. I just want to be careful so that I don't, that I don't break anything. Usually I'm careful for the first, oh, four or five minutes and then I suddenly lose interest in being careful and go for speed. There must be another screw at this end. Oh yeah, there is. Okay, good. All of this stuff is useful for projects. There we go. So we've got a super heavy, high quality steel rail. I I keep these uh, tensioning things at the end. Uh, if you're going to use one of these belts for something, that springy thing there is very handy to have. All right, so we'll just move this out of the way for now. Maybe this will be... Ah, there we go. All right, it's still attached to something. Don't be alarmed, I am a professional. Don't know how to do this though. All right, it was held on by the tape. Oh, and another. Okay, this is what we are going to be spending the remainder of our time digging into there. All right, so let me move everything out of the way and then we will focus on that.
Okay, so everything, <coughs> everything has been moved out of the way. Here's a pro tip. If you come across something <clears throat> that has wires already attached to it and a plug on the end, leave all that stuff together. And in this case, it's a nice stepper motor uh, that already has some gears attached to it. So definitely I would keep this together and uh, yeah, save me having to wire all that up and what have you. Okay, so this, <clears throat> this is what we're interested in. This piece here at the top is the, um, is the sensor. So what we're gonna have to do to get to the sensor is uh, just, it unplugs and unscrews, except I don't think I have the right shape <clears throat> screw for it. Maybe I do. Oh, I do. There's a stroke of luck. <clears throat> this is where you normally start running into Loctite, that evil chemical. That, my friends, is a CCD sensor. This is actually what camera sensors used to be, the same technology as this until uh, the, the CMOS, the metal oxide technology took over from them. But uh, yeah, these are really, really cool to look at under the microscope and they uh, take great photographs. So I'll keep a hold of that. Now we, uh, the, the lenses are almost always held in these little plastic frames that have little clips on them. And I try to keep them intact if possible. A lot of the, the parts in these things are glued in. Um, you don't know which ones are glued in until you realize you can't get them off. Some more screws here. So we're, what we're heading for, see this right here? This is the lens housing. The, um, the light on the front here illuminates the page you're scanning and then the the light bounces back up in here. It's collected and gathered by the mirrors and it's uh, directed right into the lens here, which the lens then shines right onto the sensor. I think we're gonna have to unroof this, but certainly at some point we'll have to, so we'll do it now. Now, the more expensive heavy duty the scanner is, the better the lens is gonna be, one. And number two, the heavier the material the lens is in. And oftentimes the lens is glued into a tube in here. It can be hard to get out. But the key, both to getting the lens out of this and attaching it to the cell phone, is not using anything that is gonna cloud the lens. So uh, it's why I, I'll, I don't use super glue to attach the, the lenses. If somebody would invent a machine that prints in three dimensions using plastic, say, so that you could actually make particular things, that would be perfect for this. Uh, but I, don't, I think that kind of technology is a long way away. Ah, all right, good. So what we have to do when it comes to attaching this to the phone, I've tried all manner of different things, but it, it always ends up depending on, on the um, shape of the lens because this is bigger than any lens I've seen in one of these scanners. This is one of those low pressure, low temperature mercury lights that actually takes a lot of current to get started. And I think that this is the ballast for it. Yeah. I've never figured out what to do with these, but I have about a hundred of them. There must be something they're good for. All right, I am not gonna take apart the mirror assembly right now because I don't want this to be a long video, but you can see 
the lens is not glued in. That must be another sign of this being a, a more expensive device. The lens is just held in with a metal clamp. So I'm thinking that, that we may get this right out. This lens is twice the size of the other ones I have. I'm excited. Oh, it means that my, uh, it means that my attachment device isn't going to fit. Oh, well. That's the little, that's the little frame that was holding it. Oh, and it just comes out. There you go. Now, I'll take some good pictures of this so that you can actually see it. But these are multi-element lenses and they're designed for flat field. And that, I think, is part of the reason they make such good macro lenses. I am very excited about this. Compare it size-wise to the others that I have, you can see it's considerably larger. And this is a big one compared to some of the others. So this is exciting. I look forward to seeing how this works. Let me get rid of this and uh, I'll show you how to attach it to your uh, cell phone. So when you get your lens out of the scanner and take a look at it, you'll notice that it has two distinct ends. It has an end where the, the element is closer to the surface and it has these screw indentations in it, like it's meant to be unscrewed to take the lens elements out. The other end is just deeply recessed into the barrel of the thing. And that's important because in my experience, even though both of them will give you about the same magnification, and it is a lot of magnification, if you use it with the, uh, the recessed end of the lens towards your iPhone camera, uh, you get a little bit more vignetting, but worse, you get some, um, some chromatic aberrations, but you'll see some, uh, uh, some unwanted color fringing creep in when you use the thing in that orientation. Most of them will have a, a narrowing of the barrel um, at what I call the front of the lens, the part that points at the, um, at the subject. So we need to mount this lens in this orientation with the recessed part of the lens pointing forward and the, the butt of the lens needs to be as close to the surface of the phone as possible. There seems to be a real big um, drop in, in uh, uh, image quality if this thing is not almost in contact with the uh, cell phone's lens. It's been my experience. Your mileage may differ with the lens that you have and the phone that you have. This is just, this is just to give you an idea of how you can do it so you can experiment with it. Now, I'm going to use this lens to show you how I attach it because I'm, I'm going to have to come up with a new uh, attachment for this larger lens. This is the, the size I normally work with. What I do is I, I've just taken an old flash drive that I had and I pry this cover off the bit on the outside, this piece. Uh, and then what I do is I very carefully drill a hole by hand, actually, um, right in the center at the exactly the same height as the lens on the iPhone, like so. And it'll click into place like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this lens clip or lens holder and whoops backwards. I'm going to attach the lens like so. Now I've tried a ton of different ways to do it. You, that you, you may be tempted to immediately think, oh, a little dab of super glue would be perfect for that. It probably would be, but the fumes from the cyanoacrylate will, will uh, put a haze in the glass of the uh, lens. So I, I recommend you do not do that. What I've come up with, and it's only a temporary fix, like I said earlier on, if, if, um, 
if I had a 3D printer, this would be something I would 3D print because you can make it any way you wanted and it could hold this thing wherever you need it. But what I do is I take a piece of, of double-sided Gorilla Tape. This stuff is magic and it is incredibly, it, it's thick and it's soft, but it is the stickiest material I've ever run across. If you accidentally stick it on something, it's hard to get off. So I stuck some other plastic on the other end just so that I could work with it. And what I do is peel this. Oh dear, I tore it, which means the piece that's left won't be sticky. This is not going as smoothly as I had hoped. Well, I'll tell you what, you know what, you know what I'm getting ready to do. So let me take the other, the other side of the wrapping of the tape off, like so, and that didn't break, thank goodness. And what I do is I just position this directly over the hole so that it's not Oh dear. This worked well in rehearsals. <laughs> okay, plan B, I'm going to turn it upside down. There's a reason I didn't become an engineer. Well, there's probably a lot of reasons actually. All right, that's better. Like so. Now, all we have to do is take the lens and stick it dead center right over that. So this is the finished product, this little clip with the lens stuck on like so. Like I say, there's a million ways that you can attach these. I don't have another one of these clips, but I attach the other one to my phone just with some of that double-sided tape. So you can see it holds pretty securely. So let me show you how much magnification you can get from one of these flatbed scanner lenses. This is a, a, an old iPhone that I'm doing this with. This is the lens I just took out of that flatbed scanner. That's all I have for you today. I hope you had fun with this. It's definitely worth a try. And if you have a 3D printer and come up with a way to actually connect these things to an iPhone that is better than my kind of rubbishy method here, I'd love to hear about it. And if it costs less than $2, I'll even buy one. If you have a floppy disk, I would like to buy it from you. Next up is episode two in the Lighting for Photography series, where I'm going to have to get all serious again. But uh, until then, have a good rest of the week. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.